Welcome to CSEP Biology TCP. I am Mr. Wilson from the TCP Academy. You can find us online at tcp-academy.com. Today we're going to be looking at the food chain. The food chain, as the syllabus would have had it, we should construct a food chain. Last year, many students differed on their CXC exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness. This year, Mr. Wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXC Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today. Organisms that are not limited to those of our local. So hence we are using a combination of letters and numbers here. Now I want you to tell me in the comment section, what is the consumer level for the letters here? Consumer level, whether they be producer, primary consumer, a secondary consumer, tertiary, that type of thing. Tell me in the comment, what is the consumer level for all the organisms? represented here by letters and the food chain pretty much this is what it looks like here we have a plant we have an aphid we have a love bug it is called and a frog and of course a snake and that pretty much shows a simple food chain but what is a food chain now a food chain is a diagrammatic representation of energy flow through the air. It pretty much shows how energy, nutrient, or food moves through the ecosystem from one organism to another. Now, each organism in the food chain represents all such organisms in the ecosystem. And each organism in the food chain also represents what is called a so if we were supposed to look at the food chain on screen, we could count the number of trophic levels. So here we have one, two, three, four, five trophic levels. How does the energy flow? That's pretty simple. The arrows show the flow of energy. Now, the energy flow as the plant gets its energy from the sun. You know, plants are autotrophic organisms, so they are able to convert the energy from the sun, that light energy, into chemical energy, which is passed along the food chain. So in this case, the tomato plant will be getting that energy from the sun, converts it to chemical energy. Then organism B, which is the aphid, is going to take that energy from the plant. Uh, it's going to eat the plant to get that energy. Then it will be eaten by C. And of course, C will be eaten by D, and D, of course, will be eaten by E, which is, of course, the snake. Now, the energy flow from the producer, which is a plant, to the primary consumer, which is A for that, B, to the secondary consumer at C, and then to the tertiary consumer at D. Now, interestingly, for this food chain, we have a consumer which is a snake at E. Your syllabus however is saying that you are supposed to construct a food chain with at least four trophic levels. So if we were supposed to go for minimum our food chain would have stopped. We're going to discuss why that is so. Now let us look at the consumer level for the food chain. So the first organism would have been the producer it is able to convert that light energy into chemical energy, that's organism A. Now, when we look at organism B, that's a primary consumer, and it doesn't matter which organism is in this position, it is always going to be your primary consumer. And then C, your secondary consumer. D, your tertiary consumer. And of course, E, your quaternary consumer. So this here represents a consumer level for the organism. And it doesn't matter which organism is there. And hence the reason I am using letters 
where we're having the organisms below the letter, we could plug the organism once it's a herbivore, it's going to be a B. Right? So if we enter our exam and we see a food chain looking like this, the consumer level is going to be pretty much constant. Producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and quaternary consumer. And the tr truth is, the quaternary consumer is not always there. Now, the energy is reduced by approximately 10% at each trophic level. So the food chain does not pass five organisms, which represents five trophic levels. As we move, we're looking at the energy here. Uh, if we're supposed to start with 10,000 kilojoules, a uh, uh, 1,000 kilojoules, and then to 100 kilojoules, and then to 10 kilojoules down to one. So what you're observing here is that as we move from producer to consumer, the amount of energy available dwindles significantly. Now, it is important to note here that if one of these organisms were supposed to remove, that's a question to be answered, what would happen to the other organism within the food chain? Now, it is popularly asked with the food web. Now, when an organism is removed from the ecosystem, a number of things could happen. The organism that depends on that organism for food may have to eat more of another organism if it is available, and that brings on more competition. Another thing that could happen is that the organism could resort to eating something else. And if that is not available, the organism might migrate to find food somewhere else. And if that is not possible, then the possibility lies that the organism might die. So these are all the possibilities that will pretty much come into play if one organism were supposed to be removed and the organism that depends on that organism, pretty much what would have happened to, it, to that organism. But the organism that was preyed upon by the organism which is removed, the population of that organism will definitely grow. Now, as it grows and become more pronounced in the ecosystem, then it too will bring onto itself new predators. So it's very important for you to have a clear understanding as to what will happen to organisms, that, that which is a predator, that which is the prey, what will happen to such organism if a particular organism were supposed to be moved from the food chain or food web cell. Now here we have a representation in white. We've seen something looking like 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree, 4 degree, 5 degree. It looks like that. Now this is how we represent the trophic level. So the first trophic level, Second trophic level, third trophic level, fourth trophic level, and the fifth trophic level. That's what we're seeing with those numbers. That is how the representation is done. So be reminded that the arrow shows the flow of energy. It's also very important to note that a food chain shows a unidirectional flow of energy because it's pretty much showing. The direction from which the energy is coming, where where this energy are all uh, was created, which is pretty much in the plant coming from the sun. So it shows the flow of the energy. It is flowing in one direction. Usually, the herbivore is not eating the carnivore. Now, a common mistake by many students who are doing the food chain is to identify the feeding type as being herbivore carnivore omnivore it is not like that it is not like that and the food chain must never ever be interpreted like that unless there is of course a addition to the food chain which i'll show you in short order now here we have a little activity for you use the following organism to construct a terrestrial and aquatic food chain uh with at least or trophic level. We brought back the slide you're going to be seeing next from your ecology slide when we looked at a quadrant. Once you cover the ecology lab with the quadrant, line transit, etc., it is very important for you to construct food chain, food web, that type of a thing, to show the feeding relationship in the area. You're also expected to identify the organism status or the consumer level 
for the organisms in the food chain or food web. One shop identify the role of an organism in the food chain. So remember the role of an organism speaks to the niche of the organism. What is it doing? As it were for a food chain or a food web, it pretty much confines itself to feeding relationship. So when you look at the niche, you have to look at what is being fed on or what is eaten and what is doing the eating. You have to pay attention to that when you're looking at the role. Now the food chain is a unidirectional flow of energy and of course, you must be able to explain why it is a unidirectional flow of energy. Are we suggesting that uh, the frog in this case will be eating the snake, that type of a thing? Usually it doesn't happen. All right. Uh, there are some cases where the predator can become the prey and that type of thing. There's a switch sometimes, but usually it's not the case in a food chain. Why are food chains restricted to a limited number of trophic levels? Just go right back through the video and all these answers can be found. Where does the energy come from for the food chain? That is very, very important. Be reminded that the sun is not a part of the food chain. But of course, where does the energy come from uh, for your food chain? Now, identify the role of each organism below uh, in relation to food chain Z to B. So you're identifying the... Last year, many students differed on their CXC exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness. This year, Mr. Wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXC Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today. Role of the organism here, or you could look at the consumer level for each of these organisms here. That might be an easier way to look at the question. That's question number seven. This is where we're going to be looking at and we're going to be putting together a food chain, food web, that type of a thing, both aquatic and terrestrial. Now, if you look closely, you're seeing blue areas that represent water with organisms. And you're seeing some organisms here uh, among the plants. Some are written, like worms, grasshopper, that type of thing. You're seeing a lizard over there. And you're seeing some birds flying around. You're seeing also a harp there. Uh, which is, of course, an apex predator. In the water, you're seeing small fish, large fish, frog, uh, shellfish, algae, that type of a thing. Uh, you have to construct for yourself a food chain or a food web, and you're looking at both terrestrial and the aquatic habitat. You need to construct both. I hope you understand very well, and if you don't, feel free to go through this slide again. All right, we're looking at classification by consumption. Uh, one might say pretty much the feeding type, how they feed. Now, a consumer may be classified as herbivore, carnivore, or omnivore. Now, herbivore refers to animals which eat plants only. And there's a long list of these organisms. Uh, we have slug, we have grasshopper, millipede, sea urchin, parrotfish, and of course, our manatee of the Caribbean water. We have carnivore to be animals that eat meat only. An example of this would have been our spider, our centipede, praying mantis, eagle, snake, lion, shark, and the list goes on and on. For omnivore, it's a one that usually students can only say human and the pig. Omnivore refers to organisms that are feeding on both plants and animals. Human, pigs, Hummingbird, crickets, bear, and crayfish are only some examples of omnivore for which we should be familiar. Now, here we have a spread with some pictures of both carnivore, omnivore, and of course herbivore. This should probably concretize the idea of the whole feeding type. Here we have herbivore, and you're seeing some herbivore. We spoke about the manatee, we spoke about the parrot, uh, grasshopper, goat, slug, millipedes, carnivore, you're seeing there. This is a summary of the whole idea of herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore. And of course, you should be able to identify these organisms if they were supposed to appear in front of you on a 
food chain or web now here you're looking at you now what i would want to call a hybrid food chain now we're seeing a there being the producer b there being the herbivore c carnivore and d carnivore now what is the feeding type here for e great so the feeding type for E here would have been a reference to a carnivore. So now our problem is at F. What type of organism we have here? What's the feeding type? Hmm, fabulous. The feeding type here is of course omnivore. How do we know? This organism at F is eating both plant and animal, and that's what makes it be omnivore. Now, if you observe these, herbivore, this organism is eating plant only. Carnivore, this organism is eating another animal. Carnivore, this organism is eating another animal. Carnivore, this organism is eating another animal. However, when we get to F, this organism is eating plant and animal. And if we were supposed to look at type of nutrition, uh, this could have changed significantly as we could have this organism here being an autotroph, this organism here being heterotroph, and there's a possibility that this organism here could be saprophytic, as this organism could also be a fungi or bacteria eating the dead remains of these organisms. So that's a possibility. In that case, these two long arrows could have been drawn to anything here. Anything, once it branches off and goes to a fungi or anything like that, then you know that that is going to be a prophetic relation. I do hope that we understood clearly what was said and feel free to go over the video as many times as you so wish. Now, here we have a list of organisms taken from classification. And from this list, you could just construct for yourself a food chain until you are comfortable with the construct of a food chain. Thanks much for watching. I am Mr. Wilson from System Biology TCP. You can find us online at tcp-academy.teachable.com. You can also find us on YouTube at CSEC Biology TCP. We have just done the food chain, another production from TCP Academy. Thanks for watching. And be reminded to like, share, and subscribe. Be reminded leave that comment of the questions. Last year, many students differed on their CXC exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness. This year, Mr. Wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXC Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today.